Okay, so we are now still in the prerequisite section of trig. We are on lesson uh, P.4, so the fourth prerequisite section on rational exponents and radicals. So rational exponents and radicals. Okay, so... Zero and negative exponents we kind of already discussed. Um, but if you have a zero on the base, you're going to basically get zero as an answer. So we're saying zero to whatever power. Um, what we're doing here is I'm showing you also that you can rewrite these rationals. If you recall from Algebra 2, the fifth root you can rewrite as one-fifth. The eighth root you can rewrite as one-eighth. The twenty-seventh root you can rewrite as one over twenty-seven. Okay, so zero as a base will give you zero as an answer. Um, if a is greater than zero, so this number underneath is, uh, you know, greater than zero, that means it's positive, then the answer is going to be positive. So 10, uh, the fourth root of 10, I could rewrite as 10 to the 1 fourth. So remember that. Once again, the fourth root, you rewrite it as 1 fourth. And when you're doing that, if a is less than zero and n is odd, then nth root of a is negative. So what does that mean? The third root of negative 8, you'd rewrite as negative 8 to the 1 third power. If a is less than 0 and n is even, then you're not getting an answer. And what that means is, so you can see that, if you have something even, right? If you have something even underneath a root sign, or if you have an, uh, a root that's even, that's what I mean. So the fourth root, the sixth root, the eighth root, the tenth root, all right, the square root, you have a negative underneath, you're going to get an imaginary answer. Okay, it's just something to keep in, uh, keep in mind when you're doing that. Negative 14 to the one-fourth, it will be an imaginary answer. Okay? Well, I guess that makes sense. So some more laws here with exponents, okay? Um, the nth root of n. Well, when you rewrite that, you rewrite it as n over n. Okay, so you take whatever's inside underneath that root, and it's like saying n times, I told you you could rewrite this as 1 over n, and n times 1 over n is n over n, which is 1, and a to the first power is just a. So, the cubed root of 2 cubed, it's like saying 2 to the 3 over 3, which is 1. Um, something else to keep in mind is you can rewrite it just because the n is on the inside, it still works the same if n's on the outside, because you can rewrite this as the same way as um, a to the n over n, because this right here, that would be a to the 1 over n, and 1 over n times n would still give you n over n. So the point I'm getting at here is whether it's underneath the root or on the outside of the root, it's still going to give you the same answer. So the fourth root of 8 to the fourth power, the fourth root and the 4 will cancel out to give you an 8. All right, the nth root of a times b, what that's saying here is you can basically split it up to be the nth root of a times the nth root of b. So the reason why that's important is You've already done this before. If you had um, to try to simplify square roots, you've done that when you simplified square roots. So if we wanted to, we could split up the square root of 50 into two items. I could split it up into the square root of 25 and the square root of 2. And the reason I'd want to do that is because I want to simplify them. And the reason I chose 25 and 2 is because 25 times 2 is 50. And what is the square root of 25? The square root of 25 is, is 5. So I could actually simplify that to 5 root 2. So the nth root of a over b, um, if I can multiply them and split them up, then the assumption would also be I can divide them and split it up. So I get the nth root of a over the nth root of b. So this example is I could do the cubed root of 14 over the cubed root of 64. But, just something to keep in mind, the cubed root of 64, what number three times, that's exactly the same, can give you 64. 
4 times 4 times 4. So the cube root of 64 is 4. That's what this means. What number? 3 times, that's exactly the same, can multiply together to give you 64. That happens to be 4. And the reason why this is important as well is you can't have roots in a denominator. It's a cube root. can't have that in the denominator. I need to get rid of it. Well, in this case, we're lucky because the cube root of 64 does simplify to give you 4. And if you don't know, you type it in your calculator and you figure it out. Okay? And if you do know off the top of your head, some of these cube roots will come to you right away because you start getting it after a while. All right, some more laws here of exponents. The mth root of the mth root of a. Okay, just like when you had parentheses, you were able to multiply the exponents, right? If we had like, um, if we had a to the um, m to the n, you multiply them. Well, this is the same with roots. So if you have two roots like that, you can basically combine them to make one larger root by multiplying them together. That's the same down here, if you want to think about it. Um, a to the 1 over m times 1 over n, you just multiply them to get a to the 1 over mn. So with this problem right here, I have the fourth root of the third root of 4096. Well, 4 times 3 is 12, and the twelfth root of 4096, and for those of you who don't know how to type it in your calculator, you would do 4096 with a little caret sign, and you would take it all to the 1 12th power. So you take it all to the 1 12th power, and that actually gives you 2 as your answer. In 23 years of broadcasting, I thought I'd seen it all, folks, but it looks like Peter LaFleur has actually blindfolded himself. Yeah. Simplifying the nth power exponents. They are fun. We're going to have a blast with them. You mean I actually have frickin' sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their frickin' heads? So more examples here. The cube root of 320. Okay. So you take a look on your calculator. Does it go into it evenly? You type in 320, caret sign, in parentheses to the 1 divided by 3 power, and parentheses and see what you get. So the point is, if it doesn't, then we got to try to split it up into two things that do simplify. And here's what I'm choosing. I'm choosing 64 and 5 because 64 times 5 is 320. And we just went over. What's the cube root of 64? The cube root of 64 is 4. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So this can actually simplify to 4. It's 4 times 4 times 4 three numbers that are exactly the same, they give you 64, right? Since they are exactly the same, and that means we get four cube root of five. Okay, and when we come back here, we will continue on with example two.